Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Um, this is going to be a really interesting one. Um, and it's not what you think it is. Um, it's not what you think it is. I know you read the title, um, but I've got some really deep things to share with you. Um, and if you will stick around, um, hopefully this message will change your life um, and change your trajectory as well as to how you're thinking about the current affairs that are happening in today's day and age. And so I'll start by saying this. Um, I received, um, I've received a few prophecies now um, regarding the exposure that's been happening in culture, um, the exposure that's been happening in church, um, the exposure um, that's even just been happening in people's lives individually. Um, it seems like the intensity of exposure has increased and um, yeah I want to speak into that right I want to kind of go through these prophecies that the Lord gave me uh, he gave me he gave me a prophecy in 2020 gave me a prophecy in 2023 and gave me a prophecy this year um, in October um, and as I release these I just want you to really just listen um, take heed um, because there's a reason uh, for this. There's a deeper, a, a much deeper truth behind uh, Diddy and Epstein and Weinstein and uh, I don't even know if I'm saying his name right. Um, and you know, Young Philly um, and all of these people that you're seeing in the media being exposed for different things. Um, and also in the church, right? All of the leaders and different people who have been getting exposed for different things. Um, I'm here to deliver a message to you so that um, you will take heed um, not to fall into the same thing. So yeah, let's, let's do this. Um, so in 2020, um, the 4th of November, 2020, and hopefully I can get some screenshots on the screen as well. Um, the Lord gave me a prophecy. He said to me, there is coming a distinction in the body of Christ. And so I, I, I'll write, I'll just tell you what I wrote down. Um, I prayed, Jesus, may the church see you properly, not church tradition, culture, etc. May we see you as the leader, the way you operate, the way you see, the way you believe. I heard things have to be dismantled first before I'm seen rightly. And I felt in my spirit that church leaders have been revered, um, but are false in their leading were being brought down. So church leaders that have been revered, but are false in their leading, were being brought down. Uh, there was a distinguishing, sorry, being made in the church. As trouble increases, the real church is refined and remains. Falsehood is exposed. So I received that prophecy in 2020, November, right? Uh, moving on to November again, but 2023, so two years later, I received another word concerning leaders um, for, for the era, the era that we're, we're living, living in. And this was based on Ezekiel 34. And the Lord said to me, Woe to you shepherds who look better than the sheep. Woe to the shepherds who love money more than my people. Woe to you shepherds who profit from the innocence of my people. Woe to you shepherds who are unwilling to die for the sheep. Woe to you shepherds who are wolves in sheep's clothing. Many of you didn't start like this, but have allowed your desires and lusts of the world to turn you into manipulators and wolves. Did I not call you to serve them? I never called you to be kings over congregations. I called you to be servants. Repent or I will remove your lampstand. And then he started to explain to me these other things. He said, this is one of the major reasons uh, for the shift in ministry, um, i.e. the uprising of new fiery ministries on the streets and online and etc." Uh, the spirit said to me that Jesus began to feed people himself and launch them to bridge the gap that has not been stewarded by rogue leaders. This is the reason why many have left churches and changed leadership. So that was the second prophecy. So we had a prophecy in 2020, in November. I uh, had this prophecy in um, 2023, um, in November as well. And now there's a, a final prophecy. 
and say, fine, Lord, the Lord may give me another one. But um, there's a prophecy uh, that just went just went by in October, October 1st, 2024. And this was, uh, you know, shortly after uh, hearing about the Diddy scandals and things like that. And I was just, I was praying. I was really just praying for the world, praying for the church, praying for myself and just praying that like, you know, God would keep us and keep us pure and full of integrity. And in that time of prayer, this is what uh, the Lord said to me. He said, I'm not done yet. Six more years of shaking and shifting in the church and the world. The church first, the world second. I'm separating the wheat from the chaff. I'm separating the sheep from the goats. I am making the line more clear between good and evil, between light and dark, between my kingdom and the kingdoms of this world. Many things done in secret I am bringing to light. Even the secular world will marvel and horror. I can't believe what I'm hearing. As exposure of wickedness increases, false righteousness will not save. Deeds, good deeds, will not cover. As the divide becomes more clear, you must pick a side. Wow. And so those are the prophecies that the Lord gave me concerning um, all the exposure that we've been seeing coming out recently. The Lord gave me a prophecy um, about that beforehand. And um, even the things with Diddy and all of these things that are coming out. And now we're seeing uh, young Philly as well being um, accused um, and charged of, um, you know, the different things that he's done uh, concerning uh, women we're starting to see that like God is doing something and that there is a a big window right now open of exposure. God is really separating the wheat from the chaff. Like he's separating the sheep from the goats and he's doing it gradually. And um, why is this important, right? What is the deeper truth behind Diddy and Young Philly and uh, Epstein and the uh, all these other scandals that you know have happened in the world, but also the things that have happened in the church, you know, the fall of some pastors and some leaders and um the 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 false apostles that are being exposed and all of these different things, right? It's this, right? One of the reasons, so no, number one, God is creating a remnant. In Joel 2 32, the Bible says this, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, among the remnant who the Lord calls. So we see here that God is saving a remnant, right? And I'll read this as well in the New Testament, in Romans, Romans 9, 25 to 27. It says, as he, as he says also in Hosea, I will call them my people who were not my people. So that's talking about us. That's talking about the Gentiles, uh, people around the world who um, aren't originally Jews, right? People who have adopted the Christian faith by faith um, in Jesus Christ, right? So I'll read that again. I will call them my people who were not my people and her beloved who was not beloved. And it shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there, there, that, there they shall be called sons of the living God. Isaiah also cries out concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. Wow. So we see here once again that God is going to save a remnant, right? God is going to save a remnant of people. And so the deeper truth behind this Diddy thing, the young Philly, all of these people is that you, you, you ought to check yourself. You ought to check yourself. What side are you on? God is highlighting the darkness in waves for a reason. It's not just to expose people. It's not just to um, have us pointing fingers at people, right? Yes, thank God there's going to be justice for all the things that people are doing. And I pray in the name of Jesus that every single person who's been a victim of, um, you know, Diddy's uh, things and free costs and all this other stuff, right? And 
any other person who's been exposed, Epstein, all this other stuff. I pray that the victims are comforted. I pray that they, um, they, they're healed, you know, by God. And that those who have done these things get the earthly consequences that are due to them, prison, whatever it is, right? But you have to understand something. When God is doing these things, it's a sign. When God moves, it's always a sign and it's always a sign pointing to something bigger. And the bigger thing here is this, that God is saving a remnant. And the question is like, uh, are you a part of that remnant? Am I a part of that remnant? Are we repenting of our sins daily? Are we um, exposing our darkness to light every single day? You know, are we still doing things in the dark that we know we're not supposed to be doing? Have we truly taken the grace of God to be empowered to have power over sin? Or are we indulging in sin even though we have the, the power of the Holy Spirit to turn away from sins? The, these are the questions that we should ask, ask ourselves, right? And this is the, the message, the crux of the message that I have for you today. The deeper truth. The deeper truth is, are you going to be saved? Are you a part of the remnant? Point number two of the deeper truth is this, what is done in secret will come to light. Ecclesiastes verse 12, 14, for God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Luke verse 12, one to three. In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light. And what you have spoken in the ear of inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. So... Look, this can be a good thing or a bad thing, right? The Bible also says that the things that we do in secret, God will, re will reward us in the open. So the fasting, the praying, the um, turning away from sin, the being integral, um, helping people, loving people, uh, walking with the Lord, like that, those stuff that we do in secret that we're not bragging about, we're not boasting about, God will re rewards us openly for those things. But here we also see the bad thing, the bad side of that, that God is so just that if he, if he is rewarding people for the things they're doing in secret, he also has to judge people for the things they're doing in secret. And so point number two, as I said, what is done in secret will come to light. So the bigger truth here, the, the deeper truth here behind the exposures is that God, like, we will, we will also be exposed. And so this is for you to check yourself, like, what is it that you're doing in secret? What is it that you've been keeping in the closet that you don't think God is going to expose? You don't think that it's going to come to light. It will come to light. And if it doesn't come to light on earth, it will come to light on the day of judgment. That's why it says, as I said, in, Ecclesi in Ecclesiastes, it says, for God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So let's check our hearts as we are seeing the world unfold, as we're seeing these exposures happen. Point number three, sin is gradual and not instant. James 1, 13 to 15, it says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death or brings forth death. So I want to I want to submit this as well. We we need to be careful because we can see Diddy and we can see Epstein and we can see 
uh, young Philly and see all these famous people being exposed and we can look at them and go, oh my gosh, how could they do such a thing? And rightly so, right? We can point out sin and say, oh my gosh, that, that is sin, that shouldn't be done. But whilst we're noticing that that is sin and that shouldn't be done, we also need to check ourselves. Because here's the thing, those things that you're doing in secret that you don't think will grow, they will grow. If you continue to give in to your desires in secret, when you give in to your desires, it is sin. And what happens with sin is sin matures. Sin doesn't stay small. Sin grows. That's why the Bible tells us to repent daily. That's why the Bible says deny yourself because it's these small things that grow into these big sins. Like, let me make it really clear. Like, Diddy didn't wake up and, st and do the stuff that he's doing today or that, he, you know, that he's been found out for doing today. It grew gradually. It started with one girl. Then it went on to two. Then it went on to more. Then it went on to stranger things, you know, that he, you know, that he's been alleged um, to be doing, right? And so don't think that the stuff you're doing in secret is just going to stay hidden and stay small. It's going to grow. And so take the power of the Holy Spirit, believe in Jesus, and get power to overcome those things because they will come to light and things only snowball and get worse. Point number four of the deeper truth behind all of this. God will not be mocked. What a man sows, he will reap. Galatians 6 uh, verses 7 to 8 it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So this scripture is pretty clear. God won't be mocked. God knows our hearts. God knows what we're, we're sowing into for real. He knows what we're doing in, in private. He knows what we're doing in secret. And the way that he made us, he made us to be creatures of habit and creatures of growth. So that means this, if in the dark, your habit is to do certain things, that thing is only gonna grow and grow and grow in your life until it leaks into the public, until you start doing these things in the open and people catch you doing it. Same way, that righteousness done in secret grows publicly. The more you're praying in secret, the more you're seeking the Lord, the more you're doing what, what is right and turning away from evil in private, that is also going to be translated in public as well. And so what happens sometimes is some people, they use their godly gifts externally and they put a mask on. They make it seem like they're holy on the outside by doing loads of things, by preaching, uh, by, by, by singing in public, by doing all these great and you know, wonderful things. But because in private they're doing terrible things, the private stuff catches up. And then we're confused and we're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this leader was doing this and this leader was doing this and this leader was doing that. But it's because in private they've been doing that, in private. They've been practicing it in small, small ways for years. And then it is caught up with them. So hear me. If God has been prompting you to stop small habits, stop them. The longer you practice those things, the bigger it grows and the more exposure will happen. Everything that is done in secret will come to the open. And so I want you to also just remember like the prophecies at the beginning. God's been speaking to, speaking to me about this for a long time, for, for quite a few, for four years now. And, um, you know, the reason why I didn't, I didn't release any of this before is because I was praying on it and I was waiting for God to give me the green light to release these things that were on his heart. And so, as I said in the beginning, there's six years left of this, like, and I believe there will be more exposure going forward. But what God has told me specifically is that, you know, in the next six years, there's going to be a lot more exposure happening in church and also happening in the world. Make sure that you are not on the wrong side of that. This is also a warning to us as Christians, also a warning to you. You might not be a Christian, you might just be watching this, right? To get right with God, repent, 
turn away from the things you're doing in secret. Truly embrace the gospel. Truly embrace the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. Truly embrace the power of the Holy Spirit that was given to transform you. Don't sin in private when you have the substance of God to set you free from that sin. God will not be mocked. What a man sows, he shall reap. This has been Iman the Messenger and I pray that this has blessed you. Please share this um, with other people as well um, who need to hear this, pro this prophecy, these prophecies and uh, this word of warning. Um, and yeah, I just pray that God will continue to help us um, to do what is right by him and by ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace. Like, comment and subscribe to this video if it blessed you. And please share it with others because if it blessed you, I'm sure it will bless them as well. Over here, you should have a button to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please, please subscribe. It helps with our reach. It helps us to bless more people. And over here apparently is a video that is just for you, according to the YouTube algorithm. I don't know. Click the video and let me know in the comments if the video is just for you.